Is the screen sharing with you all? Just let me know once. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So let me just give you an overview of your class twelve syllabus. My name is Amna. And see, in your standard twelve syllabus for classes twelve. Majorly, we have four branches. We'll be dealing with four branches. One of them includes electromagnetism. See, this electromagnetism is of the most marks. It consists of thirty-four marks approximately in your board examination. Then we have optics. and optics approximately comes for 14 marks so highest weightage is for electromagnetism and then after optics we have modern physics this comes for 12 marks usually in your board exams and then we have electron the last branch this comes for approximately 8 to 9 marks around 8 to 9 marks every year in your exams now see in electromagnetism basically in electromagnetism we deal with electrostatics current electricity uh, let me write it down for you so majorly we have electrostatics so out of these 34 marks electrostatics has Eight marks at least, and two chapters are included in electrostatics: electric field and charges, and electric potential. After electrostatics, we have current electricity. So, electrostatics and current electricity is the electro portion in this. And regarding the magnetism, we have magnetics. and magnetism so magnetics is your chapter 4 of ncert and magnetism is your chapter 5th of ncert then including in this only in electromagnetism we have electromagnetic induction that is emi and alternating current that is ac and one more one last is electromagnetic waves em waves so this column this whole deals with your electromagnetism and is of most weightage approximately 34 marks so this varies 34 to 35 marks every year then in optics we have two chapters ray we deal with ray optics and we deal with wave optics so few portions of wave optics like phenomena of stationary waves and regarding few basics of waves you have already studied in your 11th standard when you must have done oscillations in waves so this is just extension of it wave optics then in modern physics we have dual nature dual nature of matter and we have atoms and nuclei so dual nature atoms majorly these are related to your structure of atom chapter that is you have studied it in your chemistry classes in 11th only just the topic that comes different and new is the radioactivity which is included in this nuclei so radioactivity is totally entirely it's a different new topic for you and electronics we have one single chapter that is semiconductors so this is a general overview of your syllabus for class 12 so just note it down once then we'll begin with the first branch electrostatics just note it down Then, 
when all of you are done just write me in the chat box So most of you have done it. So let's begin with electrostatics. See electrostatics from this 34 weightage, 34 marks, electrostatics usually comes for eight marks. So what is meant by electrostatics? See statics means rest. So electrostatics is actually that branch of physics which deals with the study of charges, electrical charges which are at rest. So study of electric charge and we'll be discussing in detail what is meant by electric charge. So study of electric charge charges which are at rest. And also in this, in this unit of electrostatics, we have two chapters. One we have which deals with electric charge and the field associated with it. Electric field associated with because of the electric charge. And then we have the second chapter that is of your NCRT. We have it as electric potential and another new term that is to you that is capacitance. So electric charge and field and electric potential and capacitance. So electrostatics is basically the study of electric charges when at rest. So just let's start with the phenomena of electric charge. So what according to you is electric charge? Just write down, write me in the chat box. What is meant by electric charge according to you? Because you are already aware of this term from your lower classes as well. Shravya has responded. Yes, Namana. Yes, anyone else? Only Shravya and Namana have responded. Okay, see. See, both of you are right. See, it is the intrinsic property of matter which gives rise to various phenomena like electric forces. So it is the basic or intrinsic property of the matter. So I'll write down the definition here only for you. It is the intrinsic property means the very basic pure property of matter. This property, this electric charge, gives rise to various phenomena. Like we'll study electric forces, we'll be studying electric fields and various phenomena associated with it. So this gives rise to, which gives rise to electric forces. No. Then we have one more important thing to remember whenever we are dealing 
it experiences force when placed in electromagnetic field exactly that's what the force i'm talking referring over here so si unit of electric charge this is coulomb so if, for example this is usually represented by a capital c like this so if a body has plus 4 coulomb of charge so it will be represented like this plus 4 coulomb of charge so this c is the si unit coulomb is the si unit we have cgs unit as well so you should remember the cgs unit as well cgs unit is stat coulomb this is stat coulomb this is also called stat coulomb or we also write it as electrostatic coulomb so we represent it by esu so either it can be stat coulomb or this can be electrostatic coulomb this can be electro static coulomb so this is represented by esu so this is the S, uh, cgs unit of electric charge but if, whenever we have to write it in si unit form so we don't write coulomb or we represent it through c if you remember the way we write for force as newton we never write newton completely we write n so similarly we have coulomb for it so basically in nature we have two major types of charges what are the two types of charges positive and negative charges positive and negative charges so we have two types of charges in nature known as positive and negative so do you think are these name positive name and the negative name is on some basis or it is just randomly given any idea positive charge negative charge is it on any basis on some basis okay yes rest of you also please respond you can write me in the chat box it is on some basis atif it is based on some basis see actually this is totally random this is arbitrary this is not on any basis what happened when franklin was discovering franklin actually discovered these two charges so what happened when he observed few quantities or very few characteristics of these electric charges what happened he just named it randomly that one of the quantity is positive so the other one will be negative so whatever name had he provided at that time we would have been using that only had he provided names like north pole so we would have charge as north charge or south charges so that was just random name given at that time and by convention we are continuously using it so actually positive and negative charges these are given on random basis only so just note down this basic characteristics then we'll go in detail so just a quick revision electric charge is an intrinsic property of all the of matter basically matter means the elementary particles here matter means the elementary particles elementary particles include electrons protons these so of which all the objects are made up of obviously electron protons and all the elementary particles so it is because of these electric charges that various objects exert strong electric forces of attraction or repulsion on each other 
So ultimately, electric charge, if I give you the definition or if I say the definition, electric charge is an intrinsic property of elementary particles of matter, which gives rise to electric forces between various objects. And it's also remember one more thing. It's a scalar quantity. I hope you remember the difference between scalar and vector quantities. Yes, ma'am. Yes, teacher. Just add very few basic points as well before you begin, before we begin the detail of it. See, we have to remember the minimum value of the charges that we have. So minimum positive and the negative charges. Minimum positive and negative charge that can exist. which can exist in nature. So you have to remember this value. So minimum amount or minimum calculation that has been done regarding what is the value of these two types of charges. We have seen there are two kinds of charges, positive and negative. So see what are the values of this or what is the minimum value that a charge can accommodate in itself. So this in free form, This is plus minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. So this much is the charge of proton and electron. Basically, this is the charge on electron and proton. So many a times in questions, you are not provided with this value. So you have to put the value of electronic charge. This is also known as the electronic charge. So charge on electrons and protons also called as the electronic charge so if you are given any question and it has written electronic charge or the symbol e has been used because we will be dealing with this symbol a lot e so you just have to substitute this value 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 of coulomb so this is the electronic charge plus minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb Okay, most of the objects in nature are neutral. So any idea why we say all the objects in nature are majorly neutral? When do we say an object is neutral? Yes, anyone? When it has both positive and negative charge. Yes, when it has both positive and negative charges. Yes, Shravya, you are also right. Number of protons and electrons are same. So majorly we have negative charges as electrons and the positive charges are protons. So we say when they have equal amount of positive and negative charges. So you can leave it up to positive and negative. So all the negative charges that are included will be considered and all the positive charges that are included, that will also be considered. So most of the objects in nature are neutral. The reason is that they have equal amount of positive and the negative charges. All right, so just copy these two points as well. Then we'll see how electron is getting, is charged or charging of objects occur.
see all right so any doubts till now no teacher all right okay see before we begin what is the phenomenon of charging and what are the various methods of charging we just have to know the basic structure which you all are already aware of from your lower classes see if this is the nucleus so what is the nucleus comprises of these are the various exactly the nucleus if i say this is the nucleus this nucleus comprises majorly of protons and see nuclear forces are exerted within this nucleus so nucleus forces occur in this center central body that is the nucleus of the atom so nucleus forces occur now see apart from the protons we have some revolving structures as well what are what are those revolving structures around the electrons. nucleus electrons electrons so we have electrons as well which are revolving in different orbits so see when we'll be studying modern physics and we'll be dealing with atoms so we will see this structure in detail and how electrons are uh, how electrons are excited and jump from their ground state to the rest of the exciting state but just for now just remember these electrons are comparatively weakly bounded that protons that's what make the process of charging possible or conduction of electricity possible because these electrons these are weakly bonded weakly bonded as compared to protons so in comparison they are weakly bonded so these are weakly bonded than protons so comparatively so these electrons these are weakly bonded than protons so electrons which are in the outermost shell these are most weakly bonded most weakest and see apart from this when electrons are there in nature we will study electric force in detail but just remember whenever electrons are there and a positive charge is also there and negative charge is also there so what happens it results in electric forces as well so see there will be there are two kinds of forces which are occurring one is this nuclear force which occurs within the nucleus where protons are accumulated apart from this there are these electric forces as well electric forces occurring because of presence of electrons so due to presence of positive charge this is the positive charge and because of the negative charge we this positive and negative charge gives rise to electric forces in nature so electric forces we have it as a separate topic where we'll be dealing with laws of electric forces as well but just remember there are two kinds of forces occurring in nature one is the nuclear force other one is the electric force regarding electrons electrons are comparatively weakly bonded that protons which makes the phenomena of charging possible so see what is meant by charging i'll give you time to write this down just understand what is meant by charging see distribution or the transfer of electrons basically that is known as charging immobile charge carriers are not able to move only mobile charge carrier carriers will be able to move so mobile charge carriers in case of atom these are electrons so electrons actually move from one body to another so if we have one body which is transferring some charge we say electrons are actually moving in nature if we say a body is rich in positive charge so that doesn't mean some positive charge has occurred electrons have actually transferred why electrons why are we focusing only on electrons the reason is that electrons are weakly bonded so they can be easily removed as compared to protons and rest of the charges that um, that are in the atom so see regarding charges this is 
a body a body can be charged so whenever we say a body is charged it means there is transfer or redistribution of electrons so this occurs by transfer or redistribution transfer or redistribution of electrons so see negatively charged body if i say a body is negatively charged so this means the body has gained electrons or lost some electrons if a body is negatively charged if i say a body is negatively charged this has gained electrons whenever we say so negatively charged body so you have to remember two things when we are dealing with negatively charged bodies one is that you have to remember that it gains electrons also remember see electrons have their specific mass electrons are not massless they have their specific mass so see if uh, if many electrons have been added do you think mass will increase or mass mass should remain the same mass of the body to which the electrons are being added mass will increase definitely mass will increase see mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs so see if this is the mass of a single electron and many electrons are being added to any neutral body to make it negatively charged so this definitely means all the electrons will be having their masses means weight so what happens ultimately mass also increases mass will also increase mass also increases at least just write down till here then we'll discuss this charging phenomena in detail how is electron lost how is electron gain and how will you calculate the charges on neutral bodies so till here you have written these two points you have written just make this diagram
Yes, have you all done? Are you all done with it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, okay, before you write this uh, charging part, let me ask you one thing. If I say, I have this body, let's say this is some body A. So this is the nucleus. It has four unit positive charge and it has this much electron, these, much, these many electrons in the outermost shell. So see, what is the net charge on it? Okay, all of you should respond in the chat box at least if you are unable to unmute yourself. Zero, exactly, Shravya is right. Because see, yes, neutral, it will be neutral, Atif. Atif is also right. Q, if I write down the whatever is the total charge, this will be the sum of the positive charges as well as the sum of negative charges. So see, plus 4E for these four positive unit charge. Why am I writing E? E is not representing electron. I am writing E because it represents the charge that a proton is containing. And we have discussed a proton also consists of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus, minus 19 coulomb of charges. When we have written this part, this one. So see why I have used plus minus. Whenever we are talking about proton, we write it as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. And whenever we are dealing with electrons, exactly, Shrav, electronic charge, which is E, that's why. So this will be minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs, this much. So see, that's why I'm representing this electronic charges. So plus 4E and minus 4E for all these four electrons. So this will be zero. So this was not the main motive, what I was trying to ask you. Let's say the mass of this whole atom is A. Now, second case I'm giving you. It has this these many positive charges in its core. This was the earlier setup that I've written it just before. Now I have added one more electron in this case. This is the same body. And another, another one more case. This was the body A with these positive charges and electron. So this outermost, this fourth charge, I have just removed it out. So let's discuss it one by one regarding this one. This is the first one. This is the second case. This is the third case. So in this second case, just tell me. What is the total charge? Is it still neutral or does it no, contain any charge? A negatively charge increases. Negative charge will increase. Yes, Salman, Atif, both are right. C, QA will be, now we have plus 4E with us for these four positive charges, but we don't have plus 4, minus 4E for electrons. Now we have minus 5E with us. So minus 5e plus 4e by using simple mathematics also, you can figure it out that this will be minus e. So this will have some value. Minus e means minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. Here it was zero in this case. Here we have minus e. So we have mass A as well. Let's say m dash is the mass of this. So tell me in this second case, will the mass A or MA dash will, how will you compare it? MA dash will be greater than MA, MA will be less than MA dash, or MA and MA dash are equal? Yes, MA anyone? It will be greater than MA. MA, sorry, Shravya, please repeat. MA dash will be greater than MA. MA dash will be greater than MA. Yes, right. Salman is also right. Yes, Atif. MA dash will be greater. Because we have addition of one more electron with us. One more electron has been added. So obviously, this electron will be having its mass. So that's why the electronic charge will increase. The electronic charge has been increased. That's why we are getting negative charge. And so on, the mass will also increase. Then in the third case, what kind of charge do we have? 
positive e positive e this will be plus 4 e and minus 3 e. so this gives positive e so this shows that also that the atom a atom is now positively charged and mass let's say ma double dash is the mass so compare it with ma again ma just compare ma and ma double dash this first case and the third case ma double dash will be less than ma ma double dash will be lesser ma will be greater than ma dash yes you all are right see because the electron has been removed so now the mass will also get decreased electron is removed exactly electron is removed so the mass of the electron this is also getting removed now see these are the three basic cases that we get now what difference comes is the amount of charges that are added or that are deleted now see what i was telling you regarding what is meant by positive and what is meant by negative charges is that just see in the second case electron has been added then only we are getting minus e in the third case this electron has been removed then only we are able to get this positive e so ultimately it is what that was what was the definition of charging that i was telling you a body is charged see this body is also getting charged negatively charged this body is also getting charged positively charged ultimately the electrons have transferred in this an electron has been added so after the addition of electron it must have redistributed the charges so it becomes negatively charged in this in this third figure if you look at it electron has been removed that's why the removal of electron or deficiency of electron is leading to this positive charge so this is the very basic definition of charging majorly you have a few phenomena or few methods how do we get these how do we actually charge these bodies so we have friction we have induction so we'll discuss this just first note down this page and if you have any queries you can ask me right now or you can type me in the chat box as well
Yes, are you done with it, all of you? Yes, ma'am. All right, then let's see the methods of charging. So this was what was charging. So the cause of charging we have seen. So the cause of charging is actual transfer of electrons from one material to another during rubbing. And protons are not, not transferred during rubbing. Only electrons get transferred. So see, the reason is actually, let me tell you the reason also why protons are not transferred during this. See, we had seen this diagram, this diagram of atom. What happens? Protons are attracted in this atom and are bounded in this atom because of what? Because of what kind of forces? Nuclear forces. Nuclear forces. And electrons? Electrons are bounded because of which kind of forces? Electric forces. Electric forces. Electric forces. Electric forces. Yes, right. Electric forces. See, in nature, what happens? This nuclear force, this is 100 times stronger than the electric forces. So, which will be strongly bounded? Electrons or protons? Protons. Protons. That's why only electrons are able to move because of this. The nuclear forces do not allow the protons to move. So we cannot transfer protons. That's why in this phenomenon of charging, we always say that electrons are getting transferred or redistributions are occurring only in electrons, not of protons. So this was one of the fact. This was one of the reason that protons are not transferred during rubbing. So as an electron has a finite mass, therefore, there always occurs some charge in mass during charging. So mass of positively charged body slightly decreases due to loss of some electrons. And the mass of negatively charged body slightly increases due to gain in some electrons. Now let's see the phenomena of charging, methods of charging, or how does the object charge. So see, majorly we have three methods of charging. One, we have charging by friction, then we have charging by conduction, then we have charging by induction. So charging by friction, friction, friction you have already done. The laws of motion in 11th standard, friction was included. So yes, friction. Do you remember friction? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes. What is friction? What is this force, frictional force? Rubbing of two objects together. Yes, yes, right. Rubbing of two objects together. So basically in 11th standard in mechanics, you must have seen that because of the irregularities present on two surfaces, they get interlocked and when they move, an opposing force occurs, which resists the motion. So that was the friction force. Similarly, this is the same friction force, but this now helps in charging. This means now this helps in transfer of electrons. So see, whenever two bodies are rubbed, when two bodies are rubbed, electrons transfer. Whenever two bodies are rubbed, electrons transfer. So this friction phenomena, this is the same that you have studied in previous class. In 11th standard, you have seen various questions, various numericals on friction. So this phenomena is the same. It's just that the applications, this is one of the application of friction. And whenever two bodies are rubbed together, electrons transfer also occurs from one body to the other body. Now see, whenever work is done against friction, so rubbing ultimately creates energy. Whenever two bodies are rubbed, and you have seen this in work energy in power also, if you remember it well. So work done against this force of friction. This creates, because of this phenomenon of rubbing, this actually creates energy. It doesn't create energy, basically heat energy. It is lost in the form of heat energy. So this heat energy ultimately transfers electron. If I write it in, just, just make it a note point once. See, work done. 
work done against frictional force work is done against the frictional forces now see in this while what happens ultimately while rubbing also if you just rub your hands even together after some time you'll feel this heat because this energy loss loses in the form of heat that's why we say frictional force is a dissipative force in oscillations also you must have studied damped oscillation and damped oscillation in your previous class so what happens this when we rub heat energy gets lost because frictional forces are dissipative forces so while rubbing heat energy this transfers electron this ultimately transfers electron so positively charged body loses electron and its mass decreases positively so we have discussed this point is that positively charged body loses electron and its mass decreases positively charged body loses electron and its mass decreases so this is the basic phenomena of charging by friction see all matter if i just sum it up all matter is made up of atom an atom consists of small central nucleus which consists of what the protons and the neutrons and around it revolves what the electrons are revolving around it this that we have seen so electrons are all around it so in any piece of matter positive proton charges and negative electron charges cancel each other so the matter in bulk is ultimately electrically neutral when we say equal amount of positive and negative charges see electric origin of forces uh, of frictional forces occurs what happens the only way by which an electron can be pulled away from an atom is to exert a strong electric force on it so as electrons are actually transferred from one body to another body during rubbing frictional forces must have an electric origin electric origin within themselves so this is the cause of uh, this is charging basically charging by friction so see if we have let's take an example see if i say i have a body a it has the similar setup that we have seen in the previous example as well and we have another body b here is the difference it consists of five unit positive charges now and electrons are five over here so whose charge is greater charge of a is, is greater or b both are equal both are equal right exactly both are equal no not b shavya okay see when how how do you calculate the total charge if you have four unit positive charge you have four unit electric electric charge this will get cancelled the body will be electrically neutral because zero the net charge will be zero similarly if you calculate the charge on b this has plus 5 unit electric charge it has minus 5 unit of electronic charge so this makes it zero oh so ma'am i not see the number of protons so okay okay it's okay okay it's fine so now you know no because this yes, rubbing so this is the case just a random example i'm taking before rubbing this is the case before rubbing so see net charge on both the bodies are zero now see if i say in b this is the condition i'm giving you right now if i say in this b means in this part if i say electrons are strongly bonded as compared 
two a. This is just a random example I have taken that elect some electrons are there in B, some electrons are there in A, but the electrons which are present in B, these are strongly bonded to the central or the nucleus. So see what will happen after rubbing. This is the condition of before rubbing. Now see what will happen after rubbing. So if I talk about after rubbing, so this is A, this is B again. So if I give you this precise line that electrons in B are strongly bonded, so removal of electrons is easier in which case, A or B? Just let me know. A or B? A. Removal in? Yes, somebody answered. Atif answered. Removal in A. Yes, yes. Removal, easier to remove electrons from A. So, definitely, it is easier. Because B strongly bonded. Yes, right. A. So, Aisha has also answered. Memuna has also answered. And Shavya, yes, right, right, A. Because electrons are strongly bonded, so definitely removal of electrons from A will be difficult. So, see, it is easier to remove electron from A than B. This is because of this condition that has been provided to you in this example. So, what will happen if electrons are getting removed? So, should I write down the number of protons same or the protons of the number of protons will also change? The number of protons will be the same. Will number be the same. Will be same. Yes, right. Number of protons will be the same. Because protons are immobile, they won't get transferred. So this if had if it has four plus four unit charge, then now it will also have plus four unit charge. So let's say one electron has been transferred. So what happens after rubbing? When both of these objects are brought in contact and now they are rubbed, one electron from A is getting transferred to the B. This is just I have taken a random condition that only a single electron is taken. So there were five uh, positive charges in B, right? And this is B. Five charges. So when this electron has been transferred from A now to B. So now see, now are they having the same charge like the previous, like before no. rubbing? No, no. So what will, which one will have negative charge? B. B will have, B will have, yes, right. Because by one unit electric charge only, you don't even need to calculate. By the way, you can just calculate it from here that this will be plus E, this will be minus E. So you can simply figure it out also looking at this diagram. One electron from A has transferred to B. So this is just a very, very small example that I have taken. Ultimately in nature, what happens? Major, major changes transfer, electrons get transferred or get redistributed to the surrounding object by this phenomenon of rubbing. So if you take one object, if you take another object and both of these objects are rubbed together, then electrons get transferred from one object to another. And how this condition is determined is that because of the charges which are bounded strongly or weakly. So I had taken the condition that electrons in B are strongly bonded. That why since they were strongly bonded, they didn't electrons were transferred from A. This is the whole phenomena of charging by friction ultimately. And you should remember few sign conventions as well. Yes, yes, few sign conventions as well before we proceed towards the questions. C, by convention, few objects or few substances have been categorized as these are having positive charges, these are having negative charges, and there is no physical significance of it, or there is no actual physical proof of it. It's just that by convention, these are being used, so we also use it. So you should remember which object has which charge. Not all, but you should remember whenever 
glass rod and silk these two are rubbed together whenever a glass rod is rubbed with silk cloth so whenever glass rod is rubbed with silk cloth electrons transfer from the glass rod to the silk so glass rod becomes deficit of electrons so it ultimately has positive charges and the silk cloth this gains electrons whenever you take if you take a glass rod and you rub it with silk cloth just this simple basic so silk will get will gain electron and it will be having negative charges so you should remember this because it might happen or the question paper may ask you this question that what is the charge gained by the glass rod or the silk and one more thing rest of the things these are just arbitrary so whenever wool whenever wool woolen cloth or simple wool fabric that is taken is rubbed with plastic so similar wool instead of whatever was the phenomena occurring with glass rod is associated with wool as well so electrons transfers from wool to the plastic so wool becomes rich in positive charge and plastic becomes rich in negative charge and this also occurs after rubbing when both of these are rubbed so you can even figure it out that electrons are weakly bonded in glass rod and electrons are weakly bonded in wool that's why transfer of electrons are occurring so just remember for glass rod and silk this combination and wool and plastic that is enough so is this clear electric charge charging by rubbing yes, through friction if you have any yes, doubts you can ask me in between also and if you are not comfortable you can write me in the chat box as well just note this part then we'll do a question based on it Teacher, can you scroll down? Did you one second? Can you go up? Yes, yes, sure. Just let me. Uh, this much is fine. Yeah, yeah. I just need to copy the last line for okay. before the. All right. Take your time.
Yes, DJ Vince called. So also remember one more thing in this, when we are taking this example, when a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth, some electrons are transferred from glass rod to silk. This is obvious from this, what I've explained. The electron, the glass rod develops a positive charge due to deficiency of electrons, while the silk cloth develops an equal negative charge due to excess of electrons because of gaining of the electrons that has occurred through the silk cloth. What you should remember is that the combined total charge of glass rod and the silk, the silk cloth, this is still zero. As you can see in this also, in this example also that we had taken, ultimately, if you add the total charge after rubbing, this was plus E and minus E. So total charge after rubbing. This is plus E minus E, which is zero. And this was the case before rubbing as well. Plus QA minus QA, this was zero. So what you should remember is that the total, the combined total charge on both these glass rod, silk or wool or plastic, this is still zero. So as it was before rubbing. So what is meant by this? Electric charge is conserved during rubbing. Whenever this rubbing phenomena occurs, electric charges consume. Just let me know when you all are done. Okay, just one more thing. Those who have written it down, those who have copied, uh, just write down this question as well and try it once, then we'll discuss. Just take two, three minutes. First, note down this question, then we'll discuss. So I'm reading it out. If an object made of substance A is rubbed with an object made of substance B, A becomes positively charged, B becomes negatively charged. If, however, an object made of substance C, a third substance has been taken, then A becomes negatively charged. This is the hint only given. Now you have to find out what will happen if an object made of substance B this is rubbed against an object made of substance C. So just note down the question. Hint that you can take to solve th these kind of questions is that just identify which is weakly bonded, which is strongly bonded, then you can identify. Just take two, three minutes. And if anyone gets the answer, just let me know in the chat box.
मैम इन द सेकेंड केस सब्सटेंस सी इज रब्ड विद ए In the second case, if the substance C is rubbed with A, yes, 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 A and C, okay. A and C are rubbed. So first, do one thing. Just identify in case of A and B. First, identify in case of A and B whatever charges are occurring. So you have to, you can easily identify which one is losing electron, which one is gaining electron. Yes, then check it for A and C. And then you have to compare it for B and C. Then only you'll be able to. Yes, ma'am. Just take a minute, then I'll discuss it. Yes, yes, Salman, you are correct. It's positive. Yes, 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 ma'am. Ma'amuna is also right. Okay, Shravya. Okay, let's discuss. I think most of you have solved this. Just let's discuss it. See, how do we solve these kinds of questions? Uh, yes, Atif. Atif Ahmed. Yes, Atif. You're also right. See, firstly, you have to see what does this say. It says if an object made of substance A is rubbed with an object made of substance B. then a becomes positively charged and b becomes negatively charged so first hold down here yes khalid khalid is also right aisha yes 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 aisha fine fine perfect perfect answer so if a if i say a is positively charged as provided by the question b becomes negatively charged okay so what does this say if a is positively charged b is negatively charged then electrons are weakly bonded in which one in a or b a e. a so this shows that in a electrons are weakly bonded than b so in this question we have taken only three substances a is rubbed with b then a is rubbed with c and finally b is rubbed with c in questions in the exam you can get more objects at there like you can get another substance b as well so you just have to remember the technique so see in electrons a in a electrons are weakly bonded than b definitely now see it says the question This says if C and A are now rubbed, A becomes negatively charged. So obviously, if C and A both are rubbed in the rubbing of A and C. If A is become negatively charged, then obviously C is become positively charged. We don't have any third option available because electron transfer will occur, as we know, because we, uh, because of the phenomena of rubbing, this will occur. So A will be negatively charged, C will be positively charged. Now tell me. Electrons are weakly bonded in which one? In this. C. C. In C, electrons are weaker than A. Now, see, we just have to compare using this data. This data is now sufficient for us to know the comparison and the charges associated with B and C. so electrons are weakly bonded in b and electrons are weaker than a in case of c see you just have to compare it in this manner that electrons are weakly bonded in a than compared to b so b has the highest number of electrons which are strongly bonded and c has electrons weaker than a means c is lesser than a also so if you compare using this if you compare using this you can simply identify from this that b is greatest among them greatest in the sense what greatest as in strongly bonded electrons so see what will happen electrons are weakest in case of c so electrons are weakest in case of c that's why we'll have a positive charge and c since b 
is the strongest this is this has strongly bonded electrons this will be having negative charge so this was an easier question because only three substances were provided to you a b and c this was provided had we ha have another charge yes exactly so b will be negative because electrons are strongly bonded so if another object is provided to you another substance let's say a is rubbed with d or any other substance has been provided to you just use this you have to identify which one has weakly bonded electron when which wherever will have weakly bonded electrons the electron transfer will occur so anyone who has not written this just note it down then we'll proceed towards the second phenomena so this was all about charging by friction so easy this is easy charging by friction we'll begin with charging by conduction So most of you have answered this question well. So I guess everyone, everyone has written this. So should I scroll it down if you all agree? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So let's move on to the next phenomena that is charging by conduction. So first was charging by friction. Now we have charging by conduction. So this can come as a three marker where you have to define the methods of charging, charging by friction, charging by conduction, charging by induction. Now see in charging by conduction, the transfers occurs by itself. Whenever if you place two objects in contact, if you have two objects placed in contact with each other, then what will happen? Electrons will transfer from one to another by itself. In case of rubbing, what did we do? We actually applied forces. And because of frictional force that exists in nature, transfers, transfer of electrons occurred. In case of charging by conduction, when an uncharged body or a neutral body, this is placed in contact with a charged body. This is neutral this is charged so whenever a neutral body is placed in contact with a charged body what happens this neutral body also gets charged because of the transfer of electrons so let me write down the definition only for you when an uncharged body uncharged body basically means neutral body it has number of same number of electrons and the same number of protons this is placed in contact with a charged body So this charged body can be any, it can be positively charged, it can be negatively charged, but just you have to remember transfer will only occur of electrons. If the body is even rich in protons, transfer of protons cannot happen because of the strong nuclear forces and the atomic nuclear forces, you have this chapter, the, you have this section, so you will be studying in your second term. So this is not included in your first term. So see when a uncharged body, this is placed in contact with a charged body, it gets charged, it gets charged due to the transfer of electrons. So if I say I have this body, this is object A, let's say, this is neutral means it has no positive 
no unit positive charge excess or no unit negative charge in excess. Both the charges, positive and negative, are equal. And I have one charged body. Be it, let's say, it has more positive charge. Let's say it has more negative charge. Now, see, whenever these two are just placed in contact, rubbing is not occur. In case of the previous one that we had seen, the previous method, two bodies are actually rubbed together which generates heat and heat is dissipated because of frictional forces, which ultimately helps in transfer of electrons. In this case, if two objects are just placed together, transfer of electrons will occur. So this neutral body now will get charged. So whether it is getting positively charged, negatively charged will depend on the amount of charge that it is transferring. One more thing, one more thing that is important in case of charging by conduction, you should remember that if both the bodies are identical, identical as in both of the bodies have, like if I talk about uh, radius, a uh, sphere. So if I talk about sphere, let's say this is one sphere and this is another sphere. If both these spheres have the same radius, if both of these spheres have the same radius, Repulsion. repulsion will occur definitely repulsion and uh, attraction these depend on the types of charges that are present where the positive charges are present negative charges are present and whatever charges are present what i am telling you here if both of these objects are identical identical as in if these are two spheres if these are two spheres then we can say the radius can be equal if both of them have the radius equal then we say the object are identical. So identical means similar in size or any dimension. Now, if two objects are equal in size, or you can say the two objects are identical, then you should remember how the transfer of electrons occur. Ultimately, what happens whenever two objects are identical, this charge also gets divided equally whenever two objects if two bodies are identical charge also gets divided equally like if i tell you q1 has this object a has plus four e charge and this is neutral this is neutral the condition that i'm telling you over here that both of these objects these are identical both of them identical you can consider it in terms of mass in terms of size means both are same now see how will the charge occur. If these two spheres are brought in contact with each other, this was A, this was B. Now here the contact has been made. What will happen? Electrons will transfer definitely, but how? See, this is rich in, X, uh, this is rich in charge, this is neutral. So obviously electrons will transfer from Q1 only, but how? You just take out the average like plus four plus zero by two this is how you take the average between two bodies one plus two divided by the total number this is how we take the average so if two objects are there and two charges are present just simply add the two charges and divide it by two means take out the mean value so plus four plus zero by two this b this becomes plus two e so means elect now a this has plus 2e charge. Similarly, for the object B, this will be 4e that has come. Then the charge that is present, 0. Then this is divided by 2. So this becomes 2e. So this is the case when the two objects are identical. If A and B are identical, then only the charge gets equally divided. So I'll write down this also. If both the bodies are identical, then the charge gets equally divided. So just note down this part as well, charging by conduction. So this question solution, you have written it down.
So ma'am, charging of uh, charging by conduction always occurs between the uncharged body and the charged body. Yes, whenever uncharged body is placed in contact with the charged body, so transfer of electrons will occur. Okay. In case of frictional force, due to frictional force, the electrons were getting transferred. Now here, in case of conduction, two bodies are just placed in contact with each other, direct contact. Okay. Okay, I'm giving you an example. Just tell me in the chat box how much electrons or whatever will be the charge on both of these. If I say this is an object A and the charge it has is plus 4E and we have another object B and it has charge, let's say minus 8 electrons. So now if these two objects, these are placed in contact, then conduction will occur. So see, tell me whatever charges will be accumulated on A as well as on B. And both of these are identical.
So Shravya says minus two electron charge on both. Khalid says A has plus two charge and B will have minus four charge on contact. Yes, ma'am, no, you are right. Yes, Khaled, it will be minus two on both of these. See, both of these charges are identical. So the charges will get divided equally. If you take out the average, this will be plus four E from the A1, that is Q1 charge, and minus AT from the B. Then if you divide it by two, and similarly, this will be for B as well. It will be plus four E from Q1, and from Q2, it will be minus AT divided by 2. So this is also minus 2E and this is also minus 2E. Just let me know when you have written it down. So done? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So see, let's do a question based on this, charging by conduction only. It says two identical spheres, A and B have charges, plus 4E and minus 2E, means A sphere has plus 4e charge and b has minus 2e charge then we have a third identical charged uncharged sphere c this is placed in contact with firstly with a then b and ultimately it is finally removed we have to find out the charges on a b and c so just note down this question and at least try it once yourself similarly how we have calculated since also of these three all of a b and c all these three are identical so charges will get equally divided And remember, A and B are not rubbed together. A and B, these are plus 4E and minus 2E. We have the values of charges on these spheres. These are not rubbed together. Firstly, A is rubbed with C and then the C with the charge transferred from A. Now it is rubbed with B. So calculate it this way. Uh, yes, Shavya. Here, A, C is uncharged. Okay. Yeah. 
Salman says A will be having plus two. E. Yes, absolutely correct. B and C, perfect. Perfect, Salman. Yes, right answer. So see, you just have to calculate it case wise. First, take it for A and B. Yes, Shabya, you're also right. Calculate it for B and C. Others, except for Salman and Shravya, Atif, Aisha, Khalid, Memuna. At least tell it for A, for sphere A. Both of these are identical. C is uncharged, means it will have zero charge. Charge on A is plus 40. So in the example also, we have taken this. Yes, Atif. Atif is right. Okay, let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. Yes, Khalid. Khalid is also right. Uh, Shravya, I think there must be calculation error while calculating it for B. Just check, check it once. Uh, yes, Aisha. Yes, Aisha is also correct. Okay, so most of you have got it at least for A correctly. Fine, fine. C. Similarly to what we have done. Yes, yes, Shravya. Now you're right. This will be zero. For B and C, right answer is this only. A will have plus 2e and b and c this will be having zero now see how b gets b and c gets zero yes aisha aisha is also right now see a is this we have c these are two identical spheres now a has positive plus 4e c has zero charge now since the way we have considered the previous example also the way we have seen it for the previous one also we had seen what ultimately charge charges get equally distributed so a has plus 4e c has zero so what will happen charges will get equally distributed in which manner plus 4e from a plus zero from c divided by two this will be plus 2e and for C also, this will be plus 4E plus 0 divided by 2. I mean, we are taking out the mean value. This will be plus 2E. So plus 2E charges for A plus 2 charges for C. Now see, the second part of the question says, once it is brought in contact with A and C, we have done. Then the second part says, it is brought in contact with B as well. It means now first C and A are, are made in contact. So transfer of electrons have occurred. It, now C is no more uncharged. It is two unit positively charged. So this will be plus 2E for C. So this will be plus 2E. Now C with this value, this, this much charge, now this is brought in contact with B. So C, now we won't take the value of C as zero. Now we have the value of C as plus 2E. So we have C, we have B. So C, B was already given minus 2E. And C is now that we have as 2E. So C, plus 2E from C, then minus 2E from B divided by 2. This becomes 0. Similarly for B, plus 2E from C, minus 2E from B divided by two c what all mistakes can occur is that whenever c and b are when you when you write it down or draw the rough part b you see as minus two e so you answer immediately as two e what happens in case of this b and c are also getting rubbed these not rubbed these are brought in contact so conduction will occur so because of conduction occurring b will also be having some charge so this will be zero this will be zero so conclusion is that a will have two unit positive charge two e B will be having zero, C will be having zero. So most of you have answered. Anybody who wants to write down the solution, just take a minute and note it down. Then we'll discuss the last phenomena. And that will be the last topic for today's class.
all right so most of you must have done it by now because this you all have answered it correctly only okay now we have the last phenomena that is charging by induction so we have to remember charging by induction now so firstly you have to identify what is meant by this electrostatic induction so electrostatic induction what happens whenever a charged body is placed near a neutral conductor it induces charges due to redistribution of electrons so let me explain you like if i have this object with me i have taken this conducting rod with me so it will be having since it is neutral it will be having positive charges and negative charges so positive charge is static positive charge is static and the negative charge is mobile this we are discussing since the beginning now see and so if you have equal amount of positive charge if you have equal amount of negative charge this object this conducting rod will it have any charge or it will be neutral will it have any charge as in positively charged negatively charged or neutral yes look at the figure see number of positive charges see number of negative charges are they equal if they are equal then it will be neutral yes sarman it will be neutral right because it has equal number of positive negative charges so this is initially this is neutral now see as i've told you what is meant by this induction phenomena now see whenever i have if i bring a positive charge if this was the object now i am bringing a positive charge see this was the conducting rod that i have taken now it has positive and negative charges as well so what will happen positive negative charges are here if i bring a let's say positive rod this this is a rod this has positive charge these are the inducing charges we call these as inducing charges so if if this end has positive charge this is a positively charged glass rod tell me what kind of charges will it attract will it attract the positive one or the negative one negative one negative one so ultimately what will happen because of the attractive electrostatic forces negative charges will be accumulated over here right now see if you hold a conducting rod over if you hold this rod over an insulating stand free end electrons of the conducting rod gets attracted towards this end while the second end becomes electron deficit so sooner or later what will happen more of the electrons will get attracted this is just the first phase i have told you initially what will happen now what will happen i have this rod with me this comprises of all the positive charges so it will attract all the negative charges together and it will this side will become electron deficient so these are the induced charges so till when will the separation of charges occur this will occur when inducing charge means the one those charges which are inducing or producing this induction phenomena so inducing charge will be equal to induced charge these are induced induced because of this rod because of this phenomena of induction so these are induced charges so inducing charge becomes equals to induced charge 
till only this will occur so what happens as soon as the glass rod is taken away the charges will disappear this is what is the phenomena of electrostatic induction as soon as you take away the charge this till the time the glass rod is over here this is the setup as you, this is the setup which you see what happens free end of uh, free electrons of conducting rod get attracted towards this end while the other end becomes electron deficient the closer end acquires a negative charge while the remote end acquires an equal positive charge that till inducing charge is equal to the induced charge and as soon as this glass rod this is taken away this is the glass rod this is taken away the charges at end one let's say end one and let's say end two these disappear so this is the phenomena of induction understood what is meant by electrostatic induction let uh, me yes yes shavya uh, ma'am disappear in sense uh, they'll come back in the normal they will they will yes 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 they will uh, recombine as it was before disappear yes. means uh, the way they were before because no, nothing is now to hold the negative charges together no now the negative charges were held before the negative charges were held because of this glass rod now if you remove the inducing charge if you remove the glass rod only what will happen both of these will recombine and again it will be neutral fine yes okay so let me run, write down the definition for you as well so when a charged body this is placed near a neutral conductor it induces charges due to redistribution of electrons due to redistribution of electrons now one more thing before we wrap up this one thing you have to remember whenever a body is connected to earth we get this phenomena which you must have heard of earthing so what happens whenever a body this is connected to earth whenever a body is connected to earth we will discuss this in detail when we we'll reach to the second chapter potential is a quantity that becomes zero so its potential becomes zero now what is concerned of you is that its charge also becomes zero if it is set free so because of this charge is also zero charge is zero if it is free so like if you have an object you attach it why is why a neutral conductor instead of a neutral body you can take a neutral body as well uh, regarding you're asking regarding uh this one induction atif i guess atif yes ma'am see induction is not possible in, in case of non uh, conducting material because in case of non conducting material you can make a note as well in non conducting material uh, we will be dealing with uh, dielectrics also so those are known as dielectrics so what happens in these cases induced charge is not equal to the inducing charge this is not equal to the inducing charge that's why conductor has been specified all right atif yes ma'am fine that's you can make a note as well so see this was the phenomena of earth thing so if you are this is how it is represented potential becomes zero charge becomes zero whenever negative body is attached whenever negative body is connected 
if negative body is connected to the earth then electrons will flow from the body to the earth and similarly if positive body is there then electrons from earth will flow to the body fine so whenever you any any body is connected to earth earthing occurs this this phenomena is known as earthing the transfer of electrons either from the earth to the body or from the body to the earth is this clear charging by induction yes ma'am yes teacher okay just note it down if you if you have any queries you can ask me meanwhile Can you please Ma'am, can you explain a, a thing once more? Okay, okay, fine. See, Atif, whenever a body is connected to Earth, what happens? Potential becomes zero. Actually, this will uh, get clearer when we'll discuss potential. What is the phenomena of potential and why uh, does it occur? So it has a greater significance. What you have to remember, whenever earthing occurs, potential becomes zero, and because the potential become becomes zero, the charge also becomes zero. Now, see, remember, whenever a body is connected to Earth. since the charge is now zero why will the charge be zero only if excess of electrons will be cancelling it how do we say a body is neutral or when do we say a body is having charge zero whenever if if i say the body has plus 2 electrons it will be zero only when i add minus 2 of electrons yes atif right if i add electrons then only it will be zero over this case Yes. So similarly, in nature, whenever we have to neutralize an object, we conduct it or we connect it through Earth. So what happens? Either electrons from Earth will flow to the body, or from the body will flow to the Earth. So just has to make the body neutral, like a human body. Human body is a good conductor. Whenever we are standing on Earth, what happens? Even if we get excess of charges and we are not uh, wearing any rubber slippers or any insulating material what happens we don't feel any current because we are good conductors so what happens whatever are the excess of charges that are coming in our body these are either getting cancelled by the electrons coming from the earth to our body or these electrons vanish from our body to the earth now which will occur whether the object will be receiving electron or the object will be giving electron depends on this negative body this negative body in case of negative body electrons will flow from the body all over whatever are the excess electrons in my body that will be flown to the earth so and if the body is positively charged then electrons will come and cancel so ultimately the body becomes neutral so that's why we don't feel electric current or whenever we have excess of electrons we are not able to feel because of this phenomena of earthing only the pa passage of or transfer of electrons to the earth all right is it clear atif or should i repeat once more yes ma'am it's clear now right. so yes have you all written it down yes teacher all of you yes ma'am 